Hello and welcome back to my shop. My name is George and I'm coming to you from Chelsea, Quebec. So I don't have any woodworking to show you in today's video. Instead it's about a modification that I made to how I turn on the bench lights. Um, now what, what there will be in this video is uh, a little bit of hobby electronics. So some uh, radio frequency transmission using uh, very inexpensive uh, modules that let you do that. Uh, a little bit by way of microcontrollers. So it's sort of in the Arduino family of things. The ATtiny85 is the microcontroller uh, specifically that, that I'll be talking about. And even a touch of um, 3D printing. So, if any of that interests you, stick around. Uh, otherwise, I won't blame you for a minute if you decide to bail. So, what was the problem that I was trying to solve? Well, I didn't want to cross into the shop in the dark in order to turn on the shop lights. So, the door from the rest of the house is over here, the door to the outside is over there, and that's where the light switch is. I have also uh, a set of LED lights over the bench and uh, they're powered from a wall socket uh, so they're the kind of LED light that works directly off mains um, but I don't have them wired into electrical instead I have a regular plug into the into a socket down here and wiring going up uh, a switch part way up, so just a regular light switch that I use to interrupt the, um, the circuitry. And what I wanted to do was rig up a switch over by the door that I used to enter the shop uh, that would activate the bench lights. So here's how I went about doing that. So let me describe the setup that I'm uh, working with. Uh, here's a light switch that controls the bench lights. So there's power coming from uh, a plug in a socket and uh, one of the leads is interrupted by the light switch and the rest of it goes up to the LEDs. In parallel to that I have a relay. So there's a circuitry here that I'll describe later. Uh, but the business end of things is a, a relay. It's controlled by f 5 volts and its contacts are in parallel with the light switch. So I can turn the bench lights on by flipping the light switch on or they could be turned on by activating the relay. And of course if both of those things are going on well then the lights will be uh, will be on. So either the relay or the switch or both turns on the bench lights. So here's the wall right by the entrance to the shop. Uh, I've got a couple of batteries here providing roughly 8 volts or so to um, a DC to DC converter, so commonly known as a buck um, converter. Uh, brings the voltage down to about 5. Um, here's the circuitry. As you can see, there's not much to it. There's the microcontroller and the transmitter. Um, this guy is sending streams of pulses at uh, short intervals to the receiver. And uh, in, the, in the time between the bursts of pulses, I can add a fat pulse, and that's the signal to turn the uh, shop lights on. So just by pressing this paddle here, a little 3D printed momentary switch with a couple of contacts that you can't see and pushing the panel shorts them out and that's the signal to turn on the bench lights. Okay so there's not much to the circuitry that's uh, needed for this project and it's not expensive. So you'll need a transmitter receiver pair um, these are available offshore for about a dollar for the set and they transmit at 433 megahertz. So if I understand it right, that's a frequency that's used by hobbyists to control uh, RC models, cars, ships, uh, planes. Uh, now you'll also need some microcontrollers. So here's one microcontroller 
that sends a pulse pattern uh, through circuitry to the transmitter. The transmitter in turn turns it into an airborne signal uh, at 433 uh, megahertz. Uh, the transmitter receives it and then converts it back to digital pulses that are then interpreted by yet another microcontroller. The microcontrollers themselves, well this particular one you should be able to pick it up for about three dollars uh, a piece. It's an AT Tiny 85 and it's in the same family of microcontrollers that's, uh, that are used by the uh, Arduino uh, breakout boards. So instead of dedicating a $40 breakout board, you can get this uh, simpler sister of the chips um, for about $3. So digital pulses go to the transmitter over the air. Transmitter sends high frequency or radio frequency uh, signals uh, to the receiver. The receiver then converts them back to digital pulses and they're interpreted by the uh, receiving microcontroller. Now what I haven't shown in this mix is uh, a relay that would be attached to this microcontroller. So you would need a, for that you would need a 5 volt relay that's capable of switching uh, uh, line voltage, so uh, 125 volts at uh, a few uh, amperes. Um, they're even simpler than they look. If you take a look here, you see there's three pins. Well, one of them is ground and the other one is power. So the third one is the only pin that has information on it, and that's the data sent from the microcontroller to the transmitter. Same on the receiving end. Uh, one power, one ground. And the two in the middle, they're tied together. So that's just one signal. And so that's the data output uh, that goes to the Arduino that's then going to interpret, okay, did I get the right kind of pulse? If so, let me turn on the relay. So this is a very sophisticated pair of devices. Typically they're used to transmit short messages uh, from something like um, a weather station outside to uh, indicate what the temperature and the humidity is and so for that you would send characters and in order to send characters you would download uh, a library and use its features. My own application is a lot simpler than that. You don't need any libraries. I just need to send a string of pulses. So narrow pulses which mean don't do anything and then occasionally a fat pulse triggered by tripping the switch that tells the uh, bench lights now to come on. The sending circuitry is sending pulses at 20 millisecond uh, intervals. There are narrow pulses about uh, 100 microseconds in duration. Now the signal to turn on the uh, bench lights is um, a lengthening of those pulses. So they get uh, turned into 5 millisecond long pulses. Here I'll just do that here. So the receiving circuitry measures the duration of uh, each pulse as it comes in. Uh, if it's not close to 5 milliseconds, nothing happens. When it is close to 5 milliseconds, then the bench lights get turned on. The way I use them is if I trigger from back here, uh, then the, the bench lights stay on for 10 seconds, and that's enough time to leave the shop. Coming in from the shop door, uh, there my activation has them come on for 25 seconds. The idea being is that sometimes I'll want to come in and use the shop. At other times, I just want to come in and grab something from the bench and leave with it. And, and so in that case, I like having the, um, the lights go off after having given me enough time to come in and leave. I hope... Uh, you found this uh, interesting, perhaps uh, only entertaining, doesn't really matter. The fact that you're still here though tells me you got something out of it, so that's great, that, that uh, pleases me. Thank you for sticking it through till here. If you can make some time, of course you can make some time, we're all huddled in our houses these days, aren't we? Anyhow, uh, make some time for your passion and if you can share it, so much the better. Bye from me for now.